So we'll talk about trace loop on inspector gadget uh, BPF tools to trace system calls. My name is Almond Kriki. Uh, you can reach me at this address. And, um, this is in the context of uh, using that on Kubernetes uh, because at Ginfolk we um, do Linux and Kubernetes things together. Um, so I'm really interested in, I really like trace, trace uh, as a way to debug my applications. I like the output on well, the thing it gets. And um, this is driven by, I want to use that on Kubernetes and uh, use BPF on top of it. And I will describe the motivation a bit after. Um, so trace loop, it's a tool to trace system calls uh, in C groups using BPF on overwritable uh, PF ring buffers. An inspector gadget is something on top of it, running on Kubernetes. Uh, to, uh, and one of the gadget of inspector gadget is trace loop to be able to use that uh, on Kubernetes. Um, so I will not go long on that. I think uh, you had several BPF talks before, but basically how BPF works, you have a BPF program written uh, in C, compiled with c and LVM into a BPF bytecode and then upload it to the kernel with the BPF system call. The kernel will verify that um, your BPF program uh, doesn't cause any problem, and then later it will be uh, executed. And um, your BPF program can interact, uh, communicate with uh, user space through BPF maps. Um, I will give a, uh, so trace loop is based on uh, it's kind of uh, on top of the shoulder of giants. It's not the first BPF uh, tools. So uh, I want to mention BCC and BPF trace uh, as a really useful uh, tools before going into trace loop. Um, BCC, I find it very useful to learn about BPF whenever I want to know about a specific BPF helper function or look at the code to see how things are done. Um, there are a lot of examples for tracing, for networking, and so on on things to get inspiration from. That's really useful. And it has a lot of uh, tools, tracing tools, to trace uh, different aspects of the Linux operating system. On BPF trace, we had several talks about this today. Um, it's um, used a different language, um, its own language, and it uh, has also uh, different tools uh, tracing different parts as well. So um, based on that, um, trace loop uh, use uh, BPF as well, but it's not based directly on uh, those two. It uses Go BPF to um, to do its BPF job. And the goal of trace loop, uh, the idea was to be able to uh, retroactively trace uh, Kubernetes pod that have crashed. So um, let's go into that idea. Um, I mentioned I really like stress, uh, and I want to use that on Kubernetes. Uh, but it has some drawbacks that make it not possible to use it for all the pods all the time in production, because it's uh, too slow, and uh, it's not really the use case to use it all the time. Um, so if I use a stress to debug something, um, I, I cannot use it on all the Kubernetes pods, but only on specific things I want to st stress. And it's, uh, it's often difficult because if something crash, I don't know about it in advance. And once it's crash, it's too late to run the stress command because the process is not there anymore. Um, so the idea of trace loop is have a flight recorder. It's like uh, we are always tracing all the system calls from all the process in the Kubernetes pods, in all the containers. And recording these uh, events into a ring buffer that is uh, almost never read unless there is a crash on or the user want to know something about the, the logs. So in some, uh, in only those situation, we will um, inspect the ring buffer. So stress and trace loop uh, work differently. Um, stress use ptrace to get the information it needs. Trace loop use uh, BPF on trace points. Uh, the granularity, granularity is different. Stress, you stress specific process. You can have one or several process to stress. On trace loop, uh, use um, C groups. It will filter the events on C, based on C groups. 
Stress is, uh, well, we have seen in the previous talk, uh, is faster than before, but it's uh, still uh, slow due to the several round trips between the kernel and p -trace. Uh, trust loop is fast because it actually doesn't get the information unless the user asks for it. But in a general case, the information is written in a ring buffer without being read. Uh, but the reliability is quite different. Stress is reliable. You always get all the events you need. It cannot lose events, and it works in a synchronous way. You see the event one after another. Trust loop is different. Um, so it's possible to lose events in some cases if uh, there are too many events and uh, the ring buffer is full, for example, the trace loop will not notice everything. And in some cases, uh, trace loop might not be able to uh, read the system called parameters. Uh, in some conditions, for example, if the parameter of a system call is uh, in a page, memory page, which is not uh, mapped, maybe it's swapped away. Um, when you try to read that from BPF, from our BPF program, um, we might, the kernel will not be able to uh, load the patch from disk. So in some conditions, we don't get everything. But still, the feature for the user is the same, is to be able to see the system calls. So here is how it looks like. At the beginning, I have a trace point on the trace point sys enter. It means every time any process on the system will uh, execute any system calls, this BPF program will be executed um, on the top here. And then I, will, I want to distinguish which Kubernetes pod or which C group or which systemd service I'm running on. Um, so I will look uh, at the C group and then uh, reroute the execution to uh, a different BPF program depending on the C group. So I can distinguish if it is a pod number one or pod number two or something else and execute a different program that has, will have its own uh, path ring buffer. And then this buffer is uh, continuously written when we have new system calls, but uh, not read unless the user asks for it and uh, because something crashed and the user wants to debug. Um, so this ring buffer is configured in a way to, um, to be overwritable, which is not the default. Um, by default, ring buffers uh, from perf are, uh, when it's full, you don't write anymore, but this one are configured to overwrite, like a flight recorder. Uh, this is the same view as before. It just uh, uh, explained in a different way. Uh, in trace loop, I have two different um, BPF object file. Let's say a main object file with uh, tracing uh, syscenter and sysexit and then rerouting the execution on different modules depending on the C group. So I will start with a demo of C group. Let's see. Um, here I, um, I have a, a SSH daemon running on my laptop. And I have a command here that I will use. Oops, sorry. Uh, this command will ask a uh, trace loop. Trace loop will um, ask trace loop to um, trace all the system call from a specific C group, and I specified the C group of um, the SSHD uh, service. Um, so now it starts record, to record everything that SSHD does. So in another window, if I do something like SSH localhost, then SSHD the things. Uh, it doesn't print anything. It only prints something when I ask uh, something with Control C, and then I get all the last system calls uh, from all the process processes inside the SSHD uh, C group. Um, I had uh, another demo of possible integration in uh, systemd uh, service. Here is just an example where I have some shell script that is executed and I want to debug. Um, trust loop can work, write, can uh, work sorry, as, a, um, as a demand or as a command line tool. Here is as a demand and I will, um, we can ask it to add and remove C groups on the fly. 
Um, I will not demo it now because uh, I'm limited, limited in time. Um, so that was for Trust Loop. Now, how do we adapt uh, this kind of tools into Kubernetes? Uh, for Kubernetes, we usually don't care about specific uh, PIDs. We, the granularity of tracing is usually the Kubernetes pod. And we usually use concepts like a Kubernetes labels to uh, select the different pods. <coughs> and the user doesn't want to use SSH, but have their uh, own kubectl uh, style interface. There are already uh, tracing tools for Kubernetes based on the DP different BPF uh, Linux tracing tool. So for example, BPF trace, there is kubectl trace, and um, BCC and trace loop are used both into uh, inspector gadget. So inspector gadgets are some gadgets using BCC and some others where the trace loop gadget use trace loop. Um, so the user doesn't need to SSH into any worker node. They just use the kubectl user interface to connect to the Kubernetes cluster. On the rest, I will uh, demo Inspector Gadget quickly. Um, so here I have um, some Kubernetes uh, cluster. Inspector Gadget it, uh, command with some subcommands, and one of the subcommands is a trace loop. And then I can ask to uh, list the different uh, traces. And what I will do, I will start a new pod with some shell scripts, with some bugs in the shell scripts. So it will not do what I want. I don't get uh, the result of the multiplication I wanted to because of mistake in the shell scripts. And here I can see that the pod is here, is completed. Um, and I see a new trace for my uh, new pod, and I can get all the last system calls executed by uh, this. So here I see that the BC program inside the pod uh, read from a standard, interface, uh, standard input some multiplication and print the error. Uh, sorry, print the results. Um, Okay, so that's um, inspector gadget with uh, the trace loop uh, component. And I will not demo the other uh, gadgets, but I can just show on the web page there is um, another gadget called execsnoop. That's directly the code from BCC uh, that um, applied on Kubernetes. So I can um, filter. Um, I can use Inspector Gadget with XXNoop and specify a Kubernetes label to select which uh, Kubernetes pods to select on additional filter, like on namespace or on nodes and so on. And it prints the same thing as XXNoop from BCC. Okay, so now I want to talk a bit about the difficulties I had when working on this uh, project how to select the pod from the uh, BPF program. Um, the issue as I have is when I add a uh, trace point with BP BPF, on, uh, this, trace point, this BPF program is executed for all the, process, all the processes on the system, not for a specific pod. So I need to filter on some uh, C group or process. And I use initially this um, BPF helper function get current C group ID which is available in uh, Linux 4.18. Uh, this is only working uh, on the C group version two, so um, on the issue is some, um, some time, right, most of the time Kubernetes use a C group version one only. Um, and so there is only some recent effort to make it work on uh, C group version two. Um, so, what I needed to do is to enable SQL version 2 on uh, my Kubernetes cluster. So I needed to um, change the configuration of systemd, Docker, Kubelet, and so on to use SQL version 2. Um, and then how do I uh, select a Kubernetes pod from, um, from my BPF program? Uh, what I did in this version was to add a BPF map containing the list of uh, Kubernetes labels. Um, 
from that, I have some BPF pseudo code. Um, I read the C group, and from that C group, I read the Kubernetes labels from the BPF map. In that way, I can filter on uh, specific labels. Uh, to be able to add those uh, Kubernetes labels into BPF maps, I added um, OCI hooks. Um, so if you know Run C as uh, follow spec um, called OCI, and there, uh, there is a way to add uh, hooks at the beginning and at the end of the execution of a container. And at this point, uh, um, from the pre-start hook, I uh, ask the Kubernetes API to give me the uh, list of labels and populate the uh, BPF maps. So if you know BPF maps, you might uh, see that that's not really a correct way to do it because I do string comparison into BPF. Uh, so that's quite not good, but that's the first version. I have a pull request to do uh, things in a different way, uh, to use IDs instead of um, string comparison in BPF. But nonetheless, that works. Um, now I will talk about some uh, stop gaps that I did in trace loop, things that are not perfect, but um, yeah. Uh, so at the moment, trace loop works on a different Kubernetes configuration. Uh, um, it, tried on, it works on uh, Kinfox on uh, Linux on Kubernetes distribution, flat car on locomotive, on Minikube as well, on GKE as well. Um, even though those uh, Minikube and GKE were using Linux 4.14, and this version doesn't have the BPF helper function that I needed. Um, it doesn't have C group version two by default, and it doesn't use, it doesn't have a way to set up an OCI hook on RNC. Um, so to work around this problem, to make it work on older uh, Kubernetes setups, on older mini cubes, um, I use some uh, hacks or stop gaps. So I don't use the, this BPF helper function anymore. Um, um, I read the um, namespace of the container uh, by following those uh, structure, um, the current structure on the um, UTS namespace and the inode of that namespace. And I cannot use OCI hooks, and so um, I cannot add from user space a new um, BPF module for each new C group. Uh, because I don't have a hook to call that code. And instead, I pre-populate um, uh, ring buffers and modules uh, at the beginning, and I detect from a BPF code uh, whenever there is a new container, when there is a new namespace. And then from the BPF code, I will um, 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 update the prog array map to redirect the execution flow to the correct um, module. Um, in that way, I can um, get the very first events. So if I were to do that asynchronously, when there is a new uh, container, it might start to execute some system calls before I have a chance to get them. So, but in that way, I catch them from the beginning, and it works on um, Minikube on uh, all those kernel versions. And later on, I reconcil reconciliate the, what, BPF, what the BPF code discovers from uh, the new uh, Linux namespace with the Kubernetes API to know what belong to which pod. That's how uh, you see the demo. It works on, mini, on Minikube. Um, thank you. Is there any question? So do we have any questions? Uh, how deep can you go in tracing all this stuff? Uh, I saw you printing some strings, but that's probably all you can do. Or can you like print structures or even something more sophisticated? Uh, no, I cannot. So if I, I will go back to this. Yeah. So at the moment, uh, I lack all the knowledge that comes from the stress project in how to pass the structure from all the arguments and so on. So at the moment, I just uh, get um, the integer argument. That's easy because that's directly available from BPF. And then I get uh, 
when it's a string, uh, I use BPF prob read to get access to it, but I don't do any more passing to that to the reference the structure. So that's a limitation of the implementation that will be possible to add, but that at the same time, uh, I don't really know how to get access to the knowledge from Strace, everything that is already implemented in Strace into that, I'm not really sure. Um, at the moment, it automatically passes the list of system calls from uh, debugfs, and from that, it knows about the um, arguments if it is a char, star, a string, or something else. But I don't really do much more than that. Yeah, and there are also some multiplexing system calls that can pass all kinds of different types. So yeah, it's it's really complicated. So I just wondered what what are your plans in this respect? Do you, do you plan to overcome these limitations somehow? Um, I'm not quite sure. I know that for LSTAT, I think uh, that didn't work just as it is. I'm not sure if it is because it's a multiplexed uh, system call or not. But there was a someone uh, added a workaround from that. But I think I didn't work around for each system call is not really the way forward, or I'm not really sure. I don't know. Okay, thank you. All right, do we have another question? All right, it seems like not, so thank you very much. Thank you.